Hey everybody, Dallas again with Chaos Fragrances. Today we're back with another weekly fragrance rotation video. I believe we're at video number 24 now, and you guys know the drill. At this point, I'm going to be telling you all the fragrances that I've worn over the past week. Been having a lot of fun picking out my fall fragrances here. It's been a little bit more of a challenge just because I was so used to reaching and gravitating towards fresh aquatic fragrances and citruses throughout the summer. Now that we have been getting a little bit of a taste of cooler weather, it's given me a chance to reach for some stuff that is a little bit more sweet. So it's been pretty fun. So before we jump into my rotation here, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Also turn on post notifications and give this video a like. Now that we've done all that, let's go and jump into this video. And I do want to apologize, this video is one day late. I believe that's the first time I've been late doing this whole uh, rotation series. And again, we've been doing this for 24 weeks now. So I do apologize for that. This is supposed to be out yesterday on Tuesday. You're going to be seeing this on Wednesday. So, you know, I just kind of got a little bit busy there and I couldn't get it out yesterday. So my apologies there, but this one will be going from last Wednesday up until yesterday, which is Tuesday the 24th. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's go and jump right into this. Starting off with what I wore on Wednesday, I went with Aqua de Jo Profumo. So I've been gravitating towards this one a little bit more now that the weather has been starting to cool off just a little bit. I wouldn't necessarily say that it was cold on Wednesday, but it wasn't like hot summer weather either. It was kind of right in the middle. And for me, Aqua de Jo is kind of that fragrance I'd choose for when the temperature is just right in the middle where I'm not really sure if I should wear a fresh fragrance or if I should wear something a little bit more sweet. And so ultimately I ended up going with this guy. The main reason why is because yes, this is an aquatic fragrance with some citrus, but it also has some darker notes like incense and patchouli. And that's what I love so much about this fragrance. And that's part of what makes this fragrance so versatile and uh, why this fragrance has so much appeal and gets talked about so much is because it works in literally any sort of weather condition that you can throw at it. I know when I first got this one, I wore it a lot in the dead of winter, and I also wore it a lot in the high summer heat. It just works for about anything. Now that my collection is a little bit more developed, I do have certain fragrances that I would choose over this one for really, really cold days and really, really hot days. So this one is kind of retired to just being my in-between fragrance. So on a day when it's not necessarily blazing hot, but it's not cold either, this is usually what I'm going to go for. And this is really why I think this is a great one for fall. You know, when I first started out, I did say that this was one of my favorite summer fragrances and it still can work for summer, but I really do think that spring and fall is when this one is best suited for. So that's why we're on Wednesday, Aqua de Jo Profumo. Really, really like this one. On Thursday, I went with Creed Viking. So this is a nice spicy and somewhat minty fragrance for men. And I gotta tell you, this fragrance got completely obliterated when it first came out. Tons of hate on the scent, and I really don't see why. At least not in terms of the scent. I can see why, because people were holding it to high expectations and they were comparing it to Aventus, because let's be honest, this fragrance had some shoes to fill, being that this was the first men's fragrance released after Aventus, which was released in 2010. So Creed really took their time in creating their next fragrance specifically marketed towards men, and this is what they came up with. And so for some people, they were outraged by that, and they just hated it just because it wasn't something better than Aventus. And then some other people were a little bit more level-headed about it and kind of appreciated the scent for what it is. For me personally, I enjoy this one. People compare it to Old Spice and say that it's very dated and stuff like that, but it does have a little bit of an Old Spice type of smell, but I personally love it. It's a nice classic masculine scent, and it's one that just really resonates well with me. And if I had to pick a season when this one is best suited for, I would say it has to be fall. It really just works great in the fall. There's a little bit of a fresh pop in the opening from that mint, but then you also have a lot of spices and woods working into the mid and dry down, which makes it better suited for just kind of that in-between weather, that somewhat cooler weather where it's not blazing hot, but it's also not cold either. Yeah, this one could work in winter, it could work in spring, but really when I smell this stuff, it just reminds me of fall. And even if you look at the color of the fragrance itself, I'm not sure if it shows up on camera, but it's kind of a, a dark yellowish orange color, just kind of the fragrance itself is dark, and then along with the red bottle, this really just screams fall to me. Again, those spices work great for fall. I just like this one a lot. Almost has like a cinnamon type of smell that I get from it. I don't think cinnamon is listed as an official note in this. I could be wrong, but that's kind of what I get from it. And again, cinnamon for me personally is a very 
fall smelling type of note or just smell in general. So yeah, wore this one on Thursday, Creed Viking. I really, really enjoy this one. On Friday, I went with the Versace fragrance. This one was Versace Dylan Blue. So this one is a flanker to the original Versace Pour Homme, which was very popular and very successful. And Versace decided they wanted to go after and create a fragrance that is based on Ambroxan, like a lot of the other fragrance houses were doing. And so they came up with Versace Dylan Blue. So a way you'll hear a lot of people describe this one is it's like a hybrid of Aqua de Jo Profumo and Dior Sauvage. Uh, Dior Sauvage, not Dior. I don't know what I just said. People will say they kind of smell similar or like a mix of those two. I get more Sauvage from this than I do Aqua de Jo Profumo. In fact, I don't get any Aqua de Jo Profumo from this really. I mean, people I think say that because of the patchouli in this. There might be incense in this as well. I can't remember. I think it is patchouli that, and that's why people compare it. I don't get really any Aqua de Jo Profumo from this. If anything, I get more Sauvage, but it kind of goes in its own different direction. This one is a lot more sweet than Aqua de Jo Profumo and Dior Sauvage. So that gives it something a little bit different and it's another reason why I would pick this one a lot in the fall. This one just has a little bit more depth and a little bit more of a sweetness to it like I just mentioned. And you know, it would be a great one for all year round, but also just when the weather's a little bit cool also. Really not a bad scent here. A lot of people are gonna think this one is boring um, and you know, they wouldn't be necessarily wrong. It is another one of those blue fragrances, but it really works nice. And coming in at a price of like, I don't know, 40, 50 bucks, maybe even a little bit cheaper now for 100 mil, Really, really solid deal, and Versace knows how to make great, high-quality fragrances. So this is a really nice one. That's what I wore on Friday. On Saturday, I went with Davidoff Run Wild. So I've done a review on this one already on my channel. This is a newer release, and I think it actually came out this year. And for those of you who don't know about this one, if you haven't smelled it and you haven't watched my review, basically to sum this one up is it's kind of a hybrid between Invictus and Azaro Wanted. This to me leans more towards Azaro Wanted in the opening and then kind of goes more towards Invictus and in the dry down. So yeah, it's a hybrid of two very generic scents and you know, it is what it is. Uh, a lot of people are going to hate on this one as well, which I can understand why. I mean, I get it, uh, but it doesn't smell bad. If you like the two fragrances I just mentioned, then you'll definitely like this one. Uh, it does come across really nice. I don't mind it. I do think it's pretty nice. And honestly, I would find myself reaching for this one more than Zara Wanted and Invictus. This one does come in at a pretty good price as well, and performance is decent on my skin, so not a bad one overall. Is it necessarily worth picking up? It's really up to you. It depends on how much you like the scents that I just mentioned. It depends on if you own those. I would say this one's at least worth checking out through a sample or something if you are curious about it, because it's not half bad. It's really not. So that's what I wore on Saturday, Run Wild. On Sunday, I went with Dior Ohm Intense. So we had a really, really nice cool day on Sunday. I believe it was around like 65 degrees, which was really, really nice, especially being that that was the high temperature because still here lately, it's been getting up to like 80 degrees, it's still pretty hot. Uh, so Sunday was a really nice day and I was really looking through everything because I knew, especially for that day, I wanted to take advantage of that temperature and wear cooler weather scent and I settled on this one. And I wore this one all day and I loved it. I really enjoyed it. It really kind of reminded me how much I miss this scent and how much I miss wearing it. I definitely can't wait to wear this one more in the fall and in the winter. This one's nice and spicy. Um, it's a little bit sweet. It's a little bit woody. That iris note is beautiful. This one really is a creative um, blend of a scent. It really is a masterpiece in my opinion. Those of you who know about this one, you know how great it is. Uh, those of you who don't know about it, you should definitely check it out because it's 100% worth it. At the very least, try a sample of it. I wouldn't really necessarily recommend you blind buy this one just because it is quite a bit different than a lot of the other mainstream scents out there, but still easily worth a sample. Uh, whether you're just getting started out with fragrances or you've been in the game for a long time, definitely a must try. So moving on to Monday, I went with Guerlain Loam Ideal Cologne. So on Monday, it was back up to normal temperatures. I want to say it was like 75, 76 degrees or something like that. So it's a little bit warmer. And I ended up going with this one uh, just because I was really feeling like it that day. And the sad news about this scent is that this one has officially been discontinued, which really is a bummer. And I'm not really sure exactly why they did it. Um, I, they, re they released the new Guerlain Loam IDL Cool, which I have not tried yet. I really want to. The bottle looks really cool in that, the nice green color. Want to try that one, but I'm not sure why they discontinued this one. I'm assuming their mindset is that people are going to be gravitating towards the cool 
flanker more than this one um, and they maybe don't want to have too many fresh versions out of this I don't know exactly why uh, but this one is discontinued so if you've been wanting to pick this one up for a while and wanting to try it now is your time to do it I do carry this one on my website free shipping fast shipping I do carry this one on my website fast free shipping so check it out while you can because prices are going to start going up you know I'm not going to inflate the price just to make a profit the price is going to go up just because I have to adjust with what my supplier is doing. So, you know, I can't say for sure when that's going to start happening, but I'm sure it will at some point. So if you're wanting this one, now's the time to get it. I really enjoy the scent though. This nice creamy almond and lemon combination smells fantastic. Another great fall scent right here. This one works really well for kind of in between temperatures and this is just a really nice classy scent for men and it's worth checking out. So that's what I wore on Monday, Guerlain Lome Ideal Cologne. And to end the week on Tuesday, I went with Parfums Vintage Oriental Woods. So this is another one of their new releases. This one takes after Tom Ford Oud Wood, uh, more specifically the uh, OG formulation, basically the first formulation. I'm a really big fan of Oud Wood. It's probably the most popular and the most talked about uh, Tom Ford private blend along with like tobacco vanille and Tuscan leather and scents like that. Uh, Oud Wood is probably up there with the most popular. And it's for a good reason because that scent smells great. It's very versatile, it's very upscale, and it's very masculine. It is one that I haven't had a chance to pick up yet. Uh, really, I haven't picked up all that many Tom Ford private blends. Um, but now I kind of have been getting into them, so I do plan on picking up a few more for the fall and winter. In fact, I just picked one up the other day that you'll be seeing on the channel very soon. I'm very excited to talk about this one because I haven't heard it talked about very much. It's going to be in my fall list, and I'm also going to do a dedicated review on it. So watch out for that here, hopefully within a few days to close to a week. But Oriental Woods is a great take on Oud Wood, and this is what I'm going to be wearing uh, quite often here this fall because this one is very very nice works great in the cool weather so guys that was it for this video that was my weekly fragrance rotation let me know down below in the comments which fragrances you guys wore and that's gonna do it for this one guys so if you enjoyed this review don't forget to leave a like down below also don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss when I post and that's gonna do it guys I'll see you in the next one peace out